Good morning. Certainly welcome to everybody as we gather here on Thursday of, of the octave of Easter, of Easter week, celebrating um, this week as a special day, celebrating the resurrection of the Lord. So we begin with the entrance antiphon. They praised in unison your conquering hand, O Lord, for wisdom opened mouths that were mute and gave eloquence to the tongues of infants. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we um, gather during this um, Holy Week, this uh, octave of Easter, these eight days, celebrating them as one glorious celebration of, of the Easter day, recognizing the, the event of the resurrection and the hope and promise of life that that offers us. So we prepare for these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sin, and we ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with, with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And on this solemnity, we'll recite the glory. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have united the many nations in confessing your name, grant that those reborn in the font of baptism may be one in the faith of their hearts and the homage of their deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement toward them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this, and why do you look so intently at us, as if we had made him walk by our own power or piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, this man whom you see and know, his name has made strong, and the faith that comes through it has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brothers and sisters, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did, but God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, and that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment 
and send you the Christ already appointed to you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days, You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, In your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first, God raised up his servant and set him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. O Lord our God, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beast of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the sea. O Lord our God, how wonderful your name in all the earth. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place along the way and how they had come to recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do, you, why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish, and he took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name 
to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we continue on through the, this week of Easter, the scripture readings bring us further resurrection appearances. So they're, they, 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 like they're, it's like they offer us further proof that Jesus really did rise from the dead and that he's alive. It's like if we need anything more, you know, as we heard at Easter, the, the two, Martha and Mary and two of the Marys and two of the, two of the disciples go to the tomb early on that first day and they see the stone roll back, the burial cloths there, but not the body of Jesus. And, and, and so as this week goes on, we hear about further sort of proofs that Jesus really is alive. And so today um, in the gospel, we hear this, uh, this, so it picks up, um, the, the Gospel of Luke, it picks up that Jesus recounted, uh, or the disciples of Jesus recounted what had taken place to him along the way. And so that follows yesterday's reading, the Emmaus story, that as they're walking along, Jesus joins them, interprets the scriptures, and they invite him to stay. And it's in the breaking of the bread that they recognize that it's Jesus. So today's Gospel follows immediately after that. So the disciples are talking about that, sharing that news. And then, then um, it's like while they're there, that, that Jesus appears in their midst, you know, and speaks to them further about the scriptures and, 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 and shows them his hands and feet and takes baked fish and eats it in front of them, you know, to show that clearly he's alive, that he's not a ghost, he's not a figment of their imagination. Clearly he, he's risen from the dead and he's alive. So, so we hear that beautiful um, encounter and, and, and that assurance that Jesus really did rise. Likewise, in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear about um, them. Obviously, that was sometime after these initial appearances, but when the apostles took up this task of proclaiming the kingdom and, and making that known. So we hear very clearly that they stand among the people in Solomon's portico. And explain some of the history, you know, this Jesus, he was thought to be a prophet, mighty and wonderful, but the people rejected him when Pilate had offered to release um, Barabbas, but they called for Jesus instead. So again, just recounting that history, part of that whole story of the passion, and that, that uh, on the third day Jesus arose, just like he said. So, so, that, so, so these readings continue to offer us that hope and assurance that Jesus really did rise as he said he would, that he is the beloved Son of God and our Savior. And so these readings, I think they also um, hopefully offer us hope, you know, that he, as the apostles, again, as they first are encountering Jesus, they're terrified. They think they're seeing a ghost. You know, they doubt. They have questions. You know, who is this really? So um, even as we have firm faith, there might be at times where we sort of question things. You know, obviously, as the world goes on with the coronavirus pandemic, there are many things that we question. Um, just in the last day or two, I received some, some statements from, I have some IRA and, 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 and mutual funds, you know, someday maybe I hope to retire. Um, but then as I open those and look at it, it's like, oh, I'm gonna have to put that off many years. <laughs> you know, now hopefully um, as the economy um, opens up again and those will rebound and, and then maybe I um, can retire even early. I assure you that I'm not planning on retiring anytime soon. But so just those kind of things in the world, certainly sin, uh, sickness, death, hardships, those kind of things, often can have us um, to the, lead us to those points of sort of doubt and questioning. You know, where is God in the midst of this? So, so, so again and again, we're reminded during this Easter season that Jesus walks with us, that he um, had to suffer death, so, so he knows our struggles and weaknesses, that we're able to come to him with our questions and doubts, like the apostles, like, who are you? Is this a ghost? You know, so we're allowed to, to do that, to be honest with the Lord and expressing any of our concerns and worries and, 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 and struggles, you know, but to be confident that Jesus continues to lovingly reach out to us. Like the apostles, he doesn't send them away and say, you know, oh, how slow to believe you are. But he, but he simply um, provides to them what they need, 
So he shows them his hands and his side. He eats um, fish in, the, in their presence. So he gives what they need that they might further move along that path to believing, knowing that he really is alive. So may this Easter season help us to lay our concerns and worries at the feet of the Lord, and that may we receive what we need in order to be able to see that he really is alive, that he loves us, will provide for us in amazing ways, and that he is our Lord and Savior. As people of faith, we now turn to the Lord, trusting that he is close to us as we offer our needs and our prayers. So we pray for the church throughout the world, that it might continually be enlivened and experience hope and joy and the promise of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. We pray for our president and government leaders and uh, others in authority who um, offer advice and guidance to them. Might they lead the world and all people in ways that are truly right and good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all Christian people, especially in those moments of doubt and struggle. May, um, may, 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 may God provide to them what they need in order that they might be freed of distress and worry and find hope and confidence in God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the students, the children, still waiting and hoping to receive the, the sacraments of confirmation in the Eucharist. We pray for the RCI elect, that um, their faith might continue to sustain them as they um, wait for their reception into the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all children and families, that they might be united in care and love and respect. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for, for, for doctors and nurses and those who work on the front lines in treating people from the coronavirus or other illnesses and diseases and thanksgiving for their generous sacrifice. In, in the ways they bring comfort and healing to many. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died, especially today we remember Ed Hug, for whom the Mass intention is for. And, and also we remember Jack Blaker from, um, from, from, from Butler, a member of the parish who passed away on Monday, for his uh, and all the people departed for their eternal rest. And peace with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause to remember your own prayers. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mighty and loving God, we give thanks for the many ways you make your presence known to us. We seek your comfort and security that we find in you alone. We ask that you hear our prayers and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us life. Blessed be God forever.
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously be pleased, O Lord, to accept the sacrificial gifts we offer joyfully, both for those who have been reborn and in hope of your increased help from heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every man, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. chosen people proclaim the mighty works of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Alleluia. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present age and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go oh, in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.